In this video, we're going to see how we can use the Maven wrapper, which is supplied by default in a Spring Boot application, which has been generated by the Spring Initializer website. So let's jump in and have a look at this now. So if I get terminal up, and if I CD into my downloads folder, and the demo project, which has been generated, let's just make this a little bit larger. Expand that and clear. So let's just double check we have the project in here. And yep, there's our project. And we can see we have two files which are of interest, which are these two files here, mavenw and mavenw.cmd. And we also have a hidden directory. Hidden directories start with a dot in Mac and Unix and Linux-based systems. And that's the .mvn directory. So if we look at what's inside the mvn directory, we'll see that there's a wrapper folder. So if I go into this wrapper folder here, we can see we've got three files here. We have mavenwrapper.jar, mavenwrapper.properties, and you can't quite see it, but mavenwrapperdownloader.java. So these three files together form the Maven wrapper. And in a nutshell, what happens is the scripts which are here, so this mavenw or mavenw.cmd, depending upon whether you're using a Windows system or a Linux-based system or some derivative thereof, so for example, Mac, that depends which of these files you're going to use. So mavenw.cmd is the one for Windows, mavenw is the one for Linux-based systems and Mac. And these files are basically aware of this directory and they execute this mavenwrapper-downloader.java, which looks inside the mavenwrapper.properties. And if we look inside that, we'll see what's there. And what this file does, that downloader that we've just seen uses the properties in here to download this specific version of Maven. So you can see Apache Maven 363 is the version of Maven that it's going to download and install locally within our project. And it's retrieving that from, you can see here, the Maven central repository. So we've got HTTPS, repo maven apache.org, maven2. What that means is that when you run the mavenw command for the first time, it's going to download and install that version of Maven into your local project and then as long as you keep invoking Maven through that command, it will continue to use the downloaded version that it's placed in your project. So let's see that in action now. So if I command K to clear that. So I'm on Mac, so I need to use mvnw. If you're on Windows, you'll have to use mvnw.cmd from a command prompt or a DOS prompt, which you can access going to the start run menu and just typing cmd, which I'm sure you'll be aware of. So if I do .mvnw, by the way, I'm prefixing it with a dot slash because I haven't included the current directory on my system path. So if I just typed in mvnw, because the current directory isn't defined in the system path, it wouldn't know that I was referring to the Maven wrapper, which I want to execute. So I just put dot slash mvnw. And for example, we could just type spring boot colon run. So as part of the pom.xml file and the starter dependency, we also have a plugin that's been added to our project object model, although you can't see it explicitly, but that plugin exists under spring-boot as its prefix. So here you can see we're specifying the plugin of spring-boot and the goal of run. So if we press enter there, what's going to happen now is the Maven wrapper is going to download the version of Maven that it requires, and then it's going to kick off the build, and finally it's going to start the application for us. And you can see here it's done just that. It says started demo application in 0.544 seconds. Of course, because there was nothing for it to actually do, because we didn't specify any extra dependencies in there, for example, to make it into a web application or anything like that, it just basically starts and then it ends. But yeah, so that's how we get set up with the Maven wrapper. If we clear this off with command K and then re-execute the command, we'll see that this time it won't download a whole heap of stuff. The reason is that now it's cached the dependencies which it requires inside the .m2 slash repository folder. So on my system, for example, inside the home directory, there'll be a .m2 subdirectory and then a repository subdirectory. If I open that up, we can see here that these are all of the dependencies which are available in my local Maven repository. And in fact, if we look under org spring framework boot, which is a group ID for the Spring Boot dependencies, so org.springframework.boot, we can see here we've got a whole heap of dependencies which have been added. So if I extend that out, we can see here we've got Spring Boot and the version of Spring Boot that we're using, we can just see here is version 231. So we can see here we've got the 231 release, which corresponds to that. And I haven't used Spring Boot 231 on this machine before. So in actual fact, if I click this, we should see that it's been downloaded just now. So today at three o'clock when I'm recording this, you can see here it's just been downloaded now. 
So yeah, that's why those dependencies are now safely cached in our Maven local repository. And once you have this set up, Command K just to clear that. Once you have this set up, we can now execute any Maven commands which we're familiar with. So for example, mvnw clean, which will clean the project. So you can see here it's deleted the target directory, which the Maven build process would compile source artifacts into their built versions there. So the class files, for example, or I could choose to compile the source code. Okay, so now we can see compiling one source file. Again, to the target directory and so on. So anyway, that's a good overview of how we get started with the Maven wrapper and how to use Maven with a Spring Boot project generated from the Spring Initializer website.